Today we look at how using Mel Robbins' 5 second rule can be used to overcome fear. Use this technique to tackle fears you have in a 5 second window to help you deal with various circumstances. If today's video is of value please like the video to let me know you've enjoyed it, share it with friends and family to educate others and consider subscribing for more content like this. Make sure to hit the bell icon to be notified of uploads as otherwise YouTube won't necessarily inform you of the latest videos. Last time we explored how the 5 second rule works and can be used to beat procrastination. Mel Robbins has helped millions with what is an extremely simple principle and today's video looks at how you can deal with moments of fear using the 5 second rule to help you stay calm and help you cope with your fear. Now before we break down how the rule works in circumstances where you might be afraid, let me first share a story about Mel Robbins and how she helped someone using this technique. The situation occurred on a flight to Boston, which was quite coincidental as Mel Robbins has previously spoken about her fear of flying and how she uses the 5 second rule to help her deal with her fear. When sat on this flight, a woman named Trixie sat next to Mel was clearly distressed during a period of turbulence and reached across to hold Mel's hand for comfort. At this moment Mel asked Trixie if she would like to try a technique that might help her relax, to which Trixie replied a definite yes please. So at this moment Mel asked Trixie to think of what she was most excited about when thinking about her trip to Boston. It turned out Trixie was visiting her uncle and aunt to celebrate their 50th anniversary. So in response Mel told Trixie to close her eyes and to think about how exciting the party will be. Then they counted down 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and just like that Trixie relaxed and much of her anxiety and stress was gone. Now the story is quite a phenomenal experience but let's break down exactly what happened that Trixie went from being extremely nervous to the point of seeking comfort from a complete stranger to being excited to celebrate a party. Now the simple answer was she shifted focus from fear to excitement, which is true but understanding why shifting focus is important because that will help you reapply this technique in many circumstances. Also can make your fears work worse. So what do you do? What do you do when you're about to go talk to your boss and you feel afraid? What do you do when you have to get on a plane and you're actually terrified of flying? What do you do if you got to give a presentation and you are afraid of public speaking? Here's what you're going to do. You're going to use a strategy, the same one that I use, that has helped me beat every single fear and turned me into somebody that is terrific when it comes to a high stress situation. This is how you do it. So, what exactly happened when Trixie went through the process? Number one, she identified the purpose of experiencing the fear. Usually when you embark on doing something which you fear, you usually do it because there's a reason that's more important than the fear for you. For example in the case of Trixie, despite being afraid of flying she chose to fly to Boston for family, which she obviously considered worth doing regardless of her issues with flying. By identifying the reason you want to do something despite feeling afraid, you give yourself purpose on embarking and taking action in the first place. Now if you're ready to take action, by reminding yourself the reason you're taking action to begin with, you build up the courage to persevere and get through the difficulties. Number 2. She visualized the results she was experiencing the fear for. As previously mentioned, you want to take the first step of reminding yourself why you're taking the action you are. From here go through a visualization process to imagine what it is you will be experiencing at the end of the journey. It's not just about imagining the situation, but visualizing is putting yourself into the future and experiencing the situation and emotion. For Trixie, this was to visualize the party she was attending in Boston, visualizing all of her family being there and experiencing the joy she would feel when celebrating. This acts to give purpose to our actions, but also distracts us from the difficulty we're facing at hand. Number 3. She created an anchor for comfort. By reminding herself of the purpose of the trip and then visualizing her experience in Boston, Trixie created an anchor to help her manage and cope with her fear. The anchor serves to be a safe point of reference for her anytime she feels the sensations of fear starting to overcome her and make her feel distress. So, if turbulence was to happen again, she can use her anchor to again calm herself down and again visualize the end experience. 
Bear in mind, the technique here isn't about overcoming a fear permanently, as that requires a different treatment. It's about coping with the fear in situations where it can cause distress. You're going to use my five second rule in combination with what I call an anchor thought, and that is going to reframe what your mind is doing so that your mind goes from feeling agitation and making you afraid to reframing it from agitation to excitement. It works like magic. Now, I have used this technique for years. Number four, the five second rule acted as metacognition to change behavioral patterns. Now, in Trixie's case, what happened was by visualizing and then applying the five second rule, she applied a form of metacognition or having the understanding and awareness of your own thought processes. The brain was focused on her fear and in that moment, her distress was overwhelming her. By using the five second rule, she overrode the natural process the brain takes in that situation where it creates a sense of panic to try and escape the perceived danger and instead focuses on a future outcome and sensation she's excited to feel. In this instance, the five second rule is distracting the brain from all the signals of alarm, which is where the metacognition factors in. You understand the mind's natural process and do something to change the outcome. Number five, the five second rule actively control the prefrontal cortex. Finally, the process of using the five second rule is to control the prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is the part of the brain that's involved in things like decision making, planning and working towards goals. By taking control of your prefrontal cortex using the five second rule, you create a feeling of control in your life. By counting down five, four, three, two, one, you are taking deliberate action. The countdown pushes you out of the autopilot the brain is geared in, which in Trixie's case was a sense of danger and fear. Instead, when you act, you are exercising control and you are turning on your prefrontal cortex. By using the 5 second rule, you cultivate what researchers call an internal locus of control, which means that you believe you have control over your outcomes and future success. Now, when you feel a greater sense of control, you also feel a greater sense of confidence, which is vital when dealing with fear. Research shows us that those with an internal locus of control are happier, in better health, more likely to achieve at work and have lower levels of anxiety and depression. And the more often you keep in that state, the easier it becomes to keep feeling a sense of control in your life. How you're going to do it is this. So let's go back to the example of the plane. I'm on the plane, I'm flying to Michigan. We hit turbulence. My body's gonna start getting agitated, right? I'm starting to get nervous, my heart starts to race. One of two things can happen. I can't control how my body might feel, but I can always, always control what I'm thinking about, and I can always control how I act, and so can you. So when I'm on a plane and the turbulence hits, five, four, three, two, one, that's step one, and it's essential. And the reason why using the five second rule, five, four, three, two, one is essential is because that is how you switch the gears in your mind, you awaken your prefrontal cortex, and you trigger your brain that you're now in control of your thoughts. You've interrupted the fear, you've settled your thoughts, and now your brain is ready for that anchor thought. In Trixie's case, she used the five second rule to overcome fear by distracting the mind from her fear and focused on the outcome she was traveling towards. By using the five second rule, she triggers a number of reactions in her mind to help change her state from one of fear and distress to another of calm and excited. When coping with fear, that's an incredibly powerful tool to have at your disposal. So you see, by applying the principles of the five second rule to manage her fear during her flight, Trixie actually changed her response from being afraid of the current circumstance to being excited for what was yet to come. You can use this exact principle in your own life too. Not just in those moments you're afraid of a situation, but also those where you might be afraid of taking action towards achieving your goal. The visualization of the results of hitting a goal can act as your anchor, and the five second rule can be the driving force towards achieving it. Fear is real. You can't control the feelings that are going to rise up in your body when you're on a plane or when you're talking to your boss or when you see somebody that's attractive and you, you really want to go over and, and talk to that person. But you can always control what you think and you can always make a decision about the actions you're gonna take. 
So the next time you feel afraid, five, four, three, two, one, go to that anchor thought, tell yourself you're excited. And that, my friend, is the power of how you beat fear in five seconds flat. Will you try the five second rule to overcome fear? And if so, what fear are you trying to deal with? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like to let me know you've enjoyed it. Share it with friends or family to educate others and consider subscribing for more content like this. Make sure to hit the bell icon to be notified of uploads as otherwise YouTube won't necessarily inform you of the latest videos.